it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for episode two of Is It Worth the Hype Romanticy Edition. Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another video and we're doing episode two of my romanticy version of Is It Worth the Hype video series. So I am so far having a lot of fun with this because I am taking a scientific look at the romanticy genre and trying to see if it is right for me and if it's worth the hype as well. So if you guys haven't checked out episode one, I'm going to leave a link for it in the description box down below, as well as the playlist for past episodes of Is It Worth the Hype? And we are going to just jump on into episode number two. All right, guys. So just as a reminder, I am posing myself the question of do I actually like romanticy? And the way we are going about this is we are trying to identify what exactly is romanticy since it's a brand new subgenre that's emerging into the space, you know? And is it somewhat like fantasy romance? Are those two separate things or is it essentially the same thing? So based on the three books that I picked up from episode one, which was Assistant to the Villain, The Hurricane Wars, and The Foxglove King. <laughs> I forgot what the last one was there. So based on those three titles, I feel like I unintentionally picked up fantasy romance when I meant to pick up romanticy, but they were specifically the Goodreads Choice Awards for the romanticy category. So, so based on the books that I have been picking up and just kind of taking an overlook, just like an overview on what people are labeling as romanticy, I think romanticy and fantasy romance are kind of getting interchanged when they should be kind of two separate subgenres. So in my mind, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys have a different interpretation of what romanticy is versus fantasy romance. For me, fantasy romance is a book that is 50% fantasy and 50% romance, which means that both of them are equally developed and neither one necessarily overshadows the other. Now, there could be fantasy books that have a romance subplot in there between some characters, but the romance is not a main focus versus fantasy romance. They both share the attention to both sides. And that's really, really difficult to do because that means that you have to not only excel at the fantasy elements, but also the romance elements. Now, romanticy kind of feels like a more guilty pleasure, fun version of that because essentially at its core, it's a romance that just happens to take place in a fantastical setting. And so you don't necessarily need to have the most in-depth fantasy background and setting and magic system. It's just like a fun place for these characters to explore their romance. And generally speaking, because this is targeted towards an adult demographic, romanticy also tends to have very, very smutty scenes. Um, as part of it. So I think that that's kind of the distinction between the two that I've gathered so far. And let's see if this hypothesis holds up with the next selection of books. Now to reveal the theme for episode two, this one I am so excited by because essentially I'm going to be picking three romanticy books that are recommended by my favorite booktuber. Um, so as y'all know, one of my favorite booktubers of all time is Becca from Becca and the Books. I absolutely love her channel and I highly take her recommendations, especially since she reads a lot of the same books that I do. And she has been reading Romanticy on her channel over the last couple of years. And these are some titles that I've seen pop up constantly that she has really enjoyed over these last couple of years and highly recommends. And so I'm going to pick them up and see if we share the same thoughts. Now, I am a little bit worried because she did love Fourth Wing and give it five stars. Um, and I did not like the book and gave it two stars. So maybe our romanticy tastes are different, even though our fantasy tastes are the same. So we shall see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reveal the three titles that I'm going to be reading for this video. The first one is going to be Rhapsodic. The second one is Guild. And the third one is Fortuna Sworn. So all three of these books have been mentioned several times on Becca's channel, and she has really liked them and rated them highly. I am also really excited because the premise of these three 
sound interesting to me. Um, so the first one I'm going to be picking up is Rhapsodic. Um, I have it as both an ebook as an audiobook, and I'm going to see which one I gravitate more towards. Um, so I'll get back to you guys as soon as I have started the book and my initial thoughts with it. Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you guys about Rhapsodic because it is the first book that I picked up for this romanticy experiment. And I have some thoughts. <laughs> so surprisingly, I am getting through this book rather quickly. I just picked it up yesterday and I'm already 70% through this book. I read 70% of it in one day, which was insane to me. Um, and I was reading the ebook because I just started the ebook and then just never switched over to the audiobook to see if I would like it more. And you would think that considering I am reading so much of this book, that means that I'm enjoying it. I don't think I'm enjoying this book, but I also simultaneously can't put it down and I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> so in Rhapsodic, we are following our main character, Callie, who is a siren, and she has made multiple deals, as in 321 deals, with the Bargainer, who is this fae-like immortal creature um, who comes to the human world and he grants these favors. And in return, you have to owe him a favor. So usually people do one favor, maybe two. And the fact that Callie has 321 is unheard of. So the bargainer has disappeared over the last seven years. And now that Callie is in her mid-20s, he has re-emerged and has decided to come and call in his favors. And he needs her help with essentially this mystery that's going on in his kingdom. So I had heard the synopsis for this book many times before, not only on Becca's channel, but on other booktubers who have read this book. It's pretty popular. It's the first book in a quartet. Um, and so far people have seemed to like the series. Um, and based on the synopsis, I thought I would too. The one thing that kind of confused me about this book that I just didn't realize going into it is that essentially it takes place in our world. So it's kind of like an urban fantasy because Callie starts off being a human in our world and that, or like rather a siren. And that kind of threw me off for a loop because I thought all of this took place in like a fantastical world because she's labeled a siren and he's kind of labeled as like a fae creature. But essentially she's a siren who comes off as a human and she's living in the mortal world, but there's other immortal creatures who live in the human world and the humans know about them, but they're not bothered by them for some reason. So the world building aspect of this book is almost non-existent because essentially the author's like, everything goes, and I'm not going to explain any of like the logic behind it. Um, so we're just supposed to just accept things as they are, and I'm just constantly questioning things as I go through this book, um, because we're just along for the ride. And so Callie, our main character, um, she called upon the bargainer because um, she kills her stepfather um, because he was doing not okay things to her, and she needs the bargainer to basically help her fix the mess that she made. And she's a lonely 16 year old girl. So the cop out here is the fact that for like immortal beings, adulthood is like age 16. Um, and so she turns 16 at the beginning of this book when she first meets the bargainer in the past timeline. Um, and so, you know, it's okay, but it's really this like fey being that's clearly older than her that is constantly hanging around with this very lonely, vulnerable 16 year old girl. And that just kind of gave me the ix, you know, from the beginning, because I was just like, I do not like this dynamic. So essentially, she's at this boarding school now for like mythical beings, and she's really lonely because she's not able to connect with any other people. And so she calls upon the bargainer to basically come and keep her company every night, like to be her friend. So she's paying him in favors to be her friend. And she collects 321 of these favors because he basically spends almost every night up to a year just hanging out with her every evening and being her friend. And like, they're doing really innocent things. Like they're just like talking and watching movies and going out to get dinner. And then <laughs> later on it's revealed like the bargainer's like actual identity. And I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys, but he's like an important person. And I'm just like, don't you have more important things to be doing 
than hanging out with a teenage girl every night that you're not sleeping with. <laughs> This is such a weird dynamic. And then in the now present timeline, which is like seven years later, he's returned and he's called upon her to help him and basically take her to the other world where he lives. And they're kind of solving this mystery element of like this disappearance and this weird stuff that's going on in that kingdom. And somehow she, because she's a siren, is able to kind of help out with that situation. So this book is not the best um but it's so easy to read and I'm just going through the book so easily and it's one of those things where it's like yeah it doesn't make sense but it's also not like irritating me to no end and I'm just like at this point I'm just reading the book because why not it's not bothering me enough to DNF it basically is what I'm saying that's how low the standard is so am I gonna finish this book yes Am I going to rate it anything higher than a three? Probably no. Am I going to continue with the series? Absolutely not. Um, we're starting off on a very weird note for this video. Hey guys. So I did manage to finish Rhapsodic and my initial opinion still stands strong. Um, I finished it and I didn't strongly dislike it, but I also didn't like it either. I'm not going to continue with the series. And overall, I think I'm giving this book two stars. <laughs> By the time I finished the book, I felt like I had read this story before somewhere else and I just didn't know what. And I finally realized that it gives me really similar vibes to Akatar by Sarah J. Mass, which would make you think that I would then like this book, but Akatar in the bad way. <laughs> yeah, I know that this book definitely has like a huge demographic. Like it's, it's meant for a certain type of audience. And unfortunately, I just don't think that's me. But I also think that this so far out of all the books that I have read has been the best example of a romanticy book because it was primarily a romance book. Like I would say 75% of it was romance. Majority of the scenes, if not almost all of them, involved both of the main character and the love interest interacting with each other. So it was definitely very heavy on their development um, and their romance, which, you know, I did appreciate. And we did have that fantastical setting kind of in the background with very, very loose world building. But I think that's kind of the point. Like this is primarily a romance for fantasy readers. And so I think it kind of like accomplished what it intended to do. Um, so I think I finally found my first like true romanticy read. So continuing on with this experiment, that kind of worries me because I'm kind of thinking that romanticy is not meant for me and that I'm primarily a fantasy romance reader. So I'm going to continue reading different books that kind of like fit, you know, in the romanticy sphere and just continue seeing like what I vibe with and just continue on with this experiment this year. So that being said, we're moving on to the second book, which is Guild by Raven Kennedy. So I have started this book and I'm already 40% through this book. Um, so far, this one has been an extremely easy read, very similar in terms of pacing and like kind of like that addicting quality as Rhapsodic. So I can kind of see why we have like the same readers would like Rhapsodic and Guild. Um, so in this one, we're following our main character, Orin, and she is gold touched by the King Midas. So when she was younger, um, she was taken from her family in, you know, um, kidnapped for human trafficking. Oh, by the way, there are a ridiculous number of trigger warnings for this book. Like it is, it is dark. It is graphic. It is violent. Every trigger warning you can think of is in this book. So just, just be warned. So our main character was taken when she was a little girl and she was saved by these kind of like rogue vigilantes and one of them was Midas. And then they've been together ever since in a very kind of like romantic kind of bond. And then he becomes king for this kingdom and he ends up having the power to turn things around him into gold, like the legend. And um, one of those things ends up being her. Now, while everything he touched turns into solid gold, she is the first and kind of only thing that he's been able to touch touch that stays alive, but her entire body and essence is gold to the color. So the first chapter starts off in a very, very smutty scene involving numerous amounts of people. 
and we already are setting off the tone for this. This is a very smutty graphic kind of book. Um, however, I wouldn't necessarily say it's an enjoyable type of book because so far it's been kind of depressing in terms of the content of it but I'm vibing with the writing. Like I do really like Raven Kennedy's writing style. It's a very easy kind of writing style. It's addictive. You really are able to kind of get into it and like start to connect with the characters. Um, and you know, I'm one that I like dark content in my books. Like I'm okay with it. So that part is not phasing me too badly. It's not bothering me. Like I'm not getting triggered by any of the things that are happening um, on the pages. Um, and so it's weird to say that I'm enjoying the book because so many dark things are happening. Um, but essentially our main character is kind of caught up in a lot of politics that are happening and King Midas is essentially making a deal with another king and he's offering her up as like the prize in this negotiations and she is just taking it back because she is the king's favored and it's making her question her entire relationship with this person. So very early on I can definitely tell that this is a first book in a series. There's actually six books in this series with the sixth one coming out later this year. Um, and I can definitely feel that this book one is kind of like an intro to the series because we're getting to figure out kind of like the backstory behind Oren and her relationship with Midas because Midas isn't like the love interest because he is definitely supposed to be viewed as this very toxic, abusive, romantic relationship and we're not supposed to be rooting for this couple. But she has this huge Stockholm Syndrome with him and is just so enamored with him as a victim of so much abuse in her life and she's just attached to him. And so we're kind of seeing, I guess, the beginnings of this and then eventually we're going to meet her other love interest that hopefully gets her out of this very abusive romantic cycle. We haven't met the love interest yet so I have no idea who it would be but I am intrigued by the story um, and so far we're starting off pretty good with this book so I'm curious to see how it goes. Hey guys so I finished Guilt by Raven Kennedy and I'm left feeling pretty confused on my thoughts of this book to be quite honest. Um, this book had a plot um, it wasn't the most in-depth plot, but it was one and it was intriguing and I, I wanted to continue reading it. Um, I wouldn't say that this book was smutty. Um, there's a lot of sexual violence in this book. Um, a lot of graphic, uh, scenes that are not necessarily full of consent. Um, so this book was very dark, <laughs> very, very dark quite depressing and our main character just really goes through it in this book like nothing good happens to her it's just one terrible event after the other um you can definitely tell that this is the first book in a series because we are gearing up for all of the other characters that we're going to meet i think we actually meet her love interest at the very end of this book like the final chapter um and you can tell that just so much more is going to happen in this story um that being said, I'm not entirely sure that I want to continue with the series. When I started it, I was really enjoying it. And I thought that, you know, I would like to continue with the series. But the first book was just so depressing. Um, and nothing much really happened. It was just kind of like incredibly violent. And I don't know if I am necessarily going to trust the process to continue on with the series that it's not equally just going to be violence for the sake of violence. So I don't know. I'm kind of feeling a little bit apprehensive about this one. Ultimately, I'm giving this one three stars. It's very like middle of the road for me. Now, is it a romantic book? Yes, even though there technically isn't much romance. Like I know the romance is going to continue and it's going to develop throughout the series. In his first book, we don't really get to see it. Um, but in terms of it being a romanticy book, yes, I think it's a romanticy book. Is it the one for me though? I don't think so. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the third and final book of this 
video, which is Fortuna Sworn by um, KJ Sutton. And this is the one that I'm the most excited for out of the three. Like, Rhapsodic and Guild, I was kind of like, it could go either way. Fortuna Sworn is a five-star prediction, so I'm going to be really, really disappointed if I don't actually love this book. Um, I do know that it's the first book in a really long series, and that the first book is quite small, and the rest of the books get longer and longer, like significantly longer. Like, I think this one is only 350 pages, and then like book two automatically goes up to like 500 pages or something like that. Um, so I think it's good that the first book is going to be shorter than the rest of the series because it's going to give me a little taste for it to see if I like it or not. Um, all I know is that we're following a main character named Fortuna and she is a nightmare which is a creature that can sense other people's deepest fears and use it against them. And she is the last of her kind. Her kind is pretty much extinct. And her brother has gone missing two years prior to the start of the story. And she has been looking for him and she hasn't been able to find him. And then this fairy comes into town and says, I know where your brother is. I'll tell you where he is, but you have to marry me. <laughs> so we're off to a really interesting start for this book. I'm intrigued to get started with it. I just got the audiobook on Libby. Um, so I have it on, I had it on hold for like three months and it finally came in. So I'm excited to get started with this book. <sighs> I'm like trying not to get my expectations too high because I haven't really found like an actual book in this series that I loved. They've only been like, okay, so-so and some of them I've hated quite deeply. <sighs> I just need a win. I need a win. <laughs> hey guys, popping on here real quick to say that um, I just met Becca back of the books um so she's been here in san diego for the week to go to comic con and i met up with her so i could give her a little gift um because i haven't been able to ever send anything her way and i've always wanted to like send over a gift of like appreciation so the fact that she was here where i live meant that i could actually like meet her face to face and give her the gift in person um and i just came back from meeting her and <laughs> I am not a shy person whatsoever, but my brain just completely short-circuited and I kind of forgot the English language. Um, and I turned into like the biggest awkward turtle ever. Um, so I hope I didn't make a terrible first impression, um, but it was really nice to meet her because she's been my favorite booktuber for such a long time. And as you guys know, if you guys watch my channel, I definitely do get inspired by her videos um, for some of my video ideas. And I mean, the whole point of this entire video that you guys are watching is romantic books that are her recommendations, her favorites. So it was a nice little like full circle moment that I got to meet her. I'm going to put the picture up here as proof. Da -dun. So yeah, um, that happened. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here to pop in to finally finish off this video. Okay, so it's been over a week now since I last gave you guys the update where I got to meet Becca in person. And since then, I have finished Fortuna Sworn. Um, I haven't been able to do any updates for two reasons. Number one, I just really didn't have any updates for this book. And it'll make sense once I give my review on it. And the second reason is that over the last four days, um, my family has been sick. In fact, I am still sick. I'm still recovering. So if I look like shit, um, I feel like shit still on the inside. So um, yeah, I just haven't been able to actually give you guys an update. And we've all been trapped inside my apartment, isolating um, to not get everybody else around me sick. And then when you're sick and you're taking care of a newborn, it's pretty exhausting. All right, let me move the camera over here. <sighs> Much better. Okay, so let's go into Fortuna Sworn. Now, I don't even remember if I even started talking to you guys about this book. Like, I think the last update when I was talking about books for this video was like two weeks ago. Um, so I had finished Guild by Raven Kennedy and Fortuna Sworn was on hold on Libby and it said I still had another two weeks until I could read the book and so I was like okay I'll just prolong it and this video will come out like middle of August but then the very next day after I finished Guild I got my copy of Fortuna Sworn and so I was able to start reading it 
<coughs> so I think I mentioned to you guys briefly that in this story we're following our title character Fortuna Sworn and she is a nightmare. She is a creature that once she touches you she can uncover your deepest darkest fears and is able to kind of manipulate um, the world around you to bring those fears to life. She and her brother are the last of their kind but her brother has gone missing two years prior to the start of this book and she has been looking for him ever since. Um, the beginning of the book starts off with the fact that she meets this fairy from the Unseelie court and he basically says I can help you find your brother but in return um, you need to marry me and she agrees. So this was a five star prediction and one of my friends Alexa absolutely loves this series as well and so it was one of those series that I had been looking forward to for the longest time because it just sounded so good and I was just like I am going to love it so excited and I just never picked it up for whatever reason so I was really excited to be picking it up for this video experiment and the reason why I couldn't give you guys any updates on this book is because I was bored out of my mind and the first 30 percent of the book I was just gaslighting myself being like no it's not that bad you like it yeah you like it and I didn't I wasn't vibing with the book. I wasn't enjoying it. It was kind of the similar experience to the first two books in this video series where they're okay but like they do nothing for me and I'm just not into it. And the entire time that I was reading this book I was so bored. And it's not even a long book. It's like 315 pages and it felt like it was dragging on forever. So objectively speaking I don't think there's anything really necessarily wrong with this book. The writing was good the characters were okay, um, the plot was okay, like there wasn't anything that was standing out in a way that was just kind of like, ugh, like the way the Rhapsodic did. Um, but I just never got into the book, like I just never got into the main character, I was never really rooting for the romance. The romance was kind of weird because it was kind of stilted and the love interest, if that who is the love interest he's kind of boring right now because we didn't really get to know his personality now this is the first book in a six book series so i'm assuming we get to know the characters a lot more in depth in the other books considering they're also a lot bigger like they're just bigger books um but from what i gathered of this kind of like introduction to the world and these characters i'm just not interested I'm not engaged and I feel so bad because this is like one of Becca's favorite books and uh, it sadly didn't work for me. So ultimately I'm giving this one three stars. Um, I would recommend it for others because I do feel like it, it hits the points of romanticy like it definitely is um, in that category and in fact all three of these books definitely hit the romanticy genre like spot on and you know what it's causing me to consider that maybe in the Sarah J Mass world, I'm a huge Throne of Glass fan. And I love Throne of Glass way, way more than the Akatar series, okay? And a Throne of Glass is really a fantasy romance because it's 50% fantasy, 50% romance, and Sarah J Mass just does it so well because her fantasy work is just amazing and I love her romance. And her characters are so engaging and I fall in love with all of them. Now for the Akatar series, Akatar is 100% a romanticy series where it really focuses on the romance and it just happens to take place in a fantastical setting and I like it because of Sarah J Mass's writing and her character work where I just find it so engaging but now that I think of it, yeah, maybe I'm not a romanticy reader because I really don't seem to like that format and it doesn't matter what book I seem to pick up, it's just not vibing with me. So, going into this experiment, um, I wasn't really expecting to not like the romanticy genre at all. I was expecting to kind of figure out exactly what type of romanticy I would like, if there's like a specific niche um, or specific like demographic or subgenre or like it has to have certain tropes. But I think overall at this point, romanticy is just not for me but I do really like fantasy romance. So I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my third and final episode for this video series, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna specifically pick up three fantasy romance books, not romanticy. So they're gonna be ones that have 50% fantasy, 50% romance, and they're strong in both. 
and I'm going to see if that's just more my vibe, more my style, instead of the typical romanticy, whether it be cozy romanticy or smutty romanticy. I think I just like my romance in a contemporary setting and occasionally with my fantasy, but not like full on, if that makes sense. So on one hand, I'm really sad that I did not find any new favorites with this video. And this is now two romanticy videos in a row where I'm just having only okay reads. Um, but at the same time, I'm discovering more about myself as a reader. And hopefully this is entertaining for you guys at least. So if you guys have any recommendations for fantasy romances based on the way that I've been describing it to you guys in these videos and from book series that I've liked in the past, um, let me know in the comments down below. I would love your recommendations because I need to curate three books that I feel I'm actually going to love because I need some wins in this video series. Alright guys, so that is it. You guys know the drill. If you guys like this video, please be sure to give me a likes and a thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read any of the books I mentioned and what were your thoughts. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish content, please subscribe for some more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye!